How's it going everybody? Crusader here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my two-year credit building timeline. Now this timeline is going to take you from start to finish as far as building a credit profile. It's going to be going over the span of two years and I'm going to show you step by step of how to get to the end where you can actually get real accounts, real uh, funding, and basically have a lot more freedom in your life because you'll have credit. So let's go ahead, without further ado, let's get started. Now, I'm going to start, obviously, from the start. We got month one. This is, um, this is if you are brand new, maybe you're 18 years old, or maybe uh, you know, you're new to credit, and um, you're trying to start out building a credit profile. Well, when you do this, the first thing that you want to do, very first thing, public records. Okay, what do I mean by public records? I mean, well, first thing you're going to need to do is sign up for credit monitoring, Credit Karma, Wallet Hub, Experian. I'm going to provide links for, uh, for these sites in the description. Uh, so you can actually monitor your credit. They'll actually, by, by signing up for credit monitoring, you will be also strengthening your profile in public records because they sell your information to different, uh, you know, companies and so forth to solicit you. And, um, so, you know, that's definitely one of the first things you're going to need to do. Um, then the opt in opt out pre-screening, you want to make sure that you opt in. If you haven't already list yourself.net, that's a place where you go to uh, list your phone number address. So, um, you'll be listed in the white pages and in public records and also signing up for rewards programs. Like, I mean, Outback Steakhouse, you know, all, all these companies or all these different, uh, businesses want you to sign up for their rewards program, right? What do they ask for? Your name, date of birth, email, phone number, that they're selling your information. So what you want to do is definitely get as many of those under your belt as you possibly can. That way, when you go in, you know, when you go to apply for something, the likelihood of you getting an instant approval will be high. So let's get started. So that's, that's the first thing that you want to do is public records. That's, that's right off the gate. You don't wait for that. You do that. And you can continue to do that um, throughout the course of this uh, journey. So, and there's, you know, there's obviously no cost to it. You just sign up. It just costs you time. So, so now we're at month one. Well, like I said before, the first three uh, different accounts that you want to concentrate on are going to be the credit builder loans, secured credit cards, and the shopping cart trick cards. Now the secured credit cards, I like to focus in on cards that will eventually turn into unsecured cards because that's what you want. Um, they're not all secured cards do that. So I know for a fact, discover city and capital one do. So those are the three that I would recommend off the, off the bat as far as getting, because eventually they'll turn unsecured, um, providing you pay the bill and you don't, uh, you know, get into trouble. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And then also the shopping, uh, cart trick, uh, cards, because they don't, uh, give you any hard inquiries. Now these two right here, the credit builder loans, like self lender and credit strong, they don't give you inquiries. So you could pretty much, you know, you could have, you know, one, two, you could do two uh, credit pillar loans and have two uh, shopping cart trick cards. I mean, you could, it's like, you know, I guess it's debatable whether or not you should do that because, you know, the amount of accounts, new accounts you have is probably, you know, uh, it could be a factor later on. Also the cost, these have monthly fees, these two do anyways. So it's like, you know, do you want to sign yourself up for that? I mean, I guess you can go ahead and make that decision yourself. But um, as far as getting these, you want to, you definitely want to get them right off the bat. I'm talking within the first three months, you want to have these cards. Now, I put AU Trade Line in here. Why did I do that? Well, by adding an authorized user trade line, if you don't have any credit score, this can definitely jumpstart this process. This can help you. You don't have to get a big, uh, line that's real expensive, just something that's at least six months old, because then that will give you an actual credit score. You see, if you have nothing, if you have no score, it's going to be hard. It may be harder to even get these guys because they can't verify you. They can't, you know, see that you even exist in the system as far as having a, you know, a credit report. So getting an AU, if, if you're in that situation could definitely help you. Um, because I mean, these are, these are pretty much, I mean, they pretty much take everybody. I mean, well, not this, well, these two more so than this one, but, um, it's like, if you don't have a credit score, it, it may, you know, hold you up. So 
If you're in that situation, I would definitely recommend getting an authorized user trade line. Again, something small, at least six months old, and wait till you get a credit score. Something. It's got, you got to have something on there. All right. So now, moving right along, if we're in, now when we go into this uh, you know, phase of the uh, building the credit, when you're about I don't know, five, six months, you can now start thinking about paying down your credit builder loan. Now, why do you want to pay down your credit builder loan? I thought that you need to uh, pay it over time, right? Doesn't that build credit? Yes, it does. But it actually hurts your credit if you have a new loan that doesn't have uh, a lot of payments made on it, that the percentage of the loan is new and you owe you know, pretty much all of the loan that you just signed up for. So what a good idea would be to either pay off or pay down, at least pay down to about half the credit builder loan. Because that way, when you go to apply in this phase, they'll see, oh, okay, he's got a loan, but he's paid half of it down. Okay, so that, you know, that looks good on a credit report. So that's what you want to do. Um, you know, that's something, it's your option. You can do that or not. Um, but uh, it definitely helps. Also, when you get your secured credit cards, um, you want to, you know, as far as how much you put, uh, you know, down as far as, you know, your starting uh, limit. If you put down more, like let's just say, I mean, the minimum is $200, but if let's just say you put down like $1,000, when you go over here to the graduation section, you know, when it's time for your car to graduate, you're going to get all that money back, plus you're going to keep the limit. So it's like if you pay up front now, you know, early, then, you know, down the road, it pays off because you get to start with a higher limit. So that's, again, something that, you know, personally, if you can afford to do that, I would suggest doing that. Only because um, you know it's it's always going to help having an older card on your profile with a higher limit, and um, I know Citibank doesn't let you add later. Citibank basically, when you start out uh, with a limit, that's you're, you're stuck with that limit until it graduates. There's they don't let you add money to it. S Discover does, so you could start out at two you know a two hundred dollar limit, get the card open, and then around in here add like a thousand bucks on it. And then over here, when it graduates, you'll now have a card with a $1,200 limit. They give you all the money back. And now, you know, you're sitting, you know, prettier than you would if you would have kept it at 200 because they'll probably, I think they'll probably start you out like at 500. So it's like, that's definitely a strategy you can think about doing down the road, but it's up to you. Again, some people don't have that kind of money to, you know, come up with up front. So, um, you know, that option's not available to them. But if you do, that's definitely something you can do. So moving into this area, right here into like the six month to a year area, that's when you're actually going to be able to get like a good card. What do I mean by a good card? Well, you're going to get cards. You'll be able to get cards that are like within a thousand to $5,000 limit. Um, the, you know, the, the cards that you can actually go ahead and cold apply for what I mean by cold apply is uh, no, you know, they didn't give you an offer. You're not pre-qualified. You're not pre-approved. You just, cold went you know on the internet or walked into a store and applied now the cards that uh in this you know area of your timeline that you're going to be able to uh cold apply successfully and get are going to be synchrony cards you're now pretty much open to synchrony cards in the six month to a year community bank these are both major you know majority store cards they're you know not actual lines of credit synchrony has some lines of credit like with a store card like Dick's and stuff. But majority, these are majority uh, store cards. And Citibank, maybe. Citibank, I mean, for some reason, they've just been, you know, they've been very generous and uh, within giving out the money. Like I just uh, talked about in a previous video with their uh, American Airlines card. So you can try to apply for Citibank uh, cold, but I would wait to see if they give you an offer. So it's because right here I have respond to offer. Right about here in this part of the timeline, you're going to start getting offers in the mail as long as you did all this stuff up here. You put yourself in public records. Um, you've been going to your uh, credit monitoring and uh, getting pre-qualified for loans, signing up for things like that. As long as you're doing that stuff and you, know, you're, you don't have a lot of dings on your credit as far as missed payments, you're going to start getting offers. So see what you get in the mail. I would, I mean, synchrony, you're pretty safe, in, you know, as far as, you know, in this time frame. But as far as city, you can apply, but I'd wait to see what offers you get. 
But um, also just wait and see what offers you get because let me tell you something about offers. Sometimes, you know, credit card companies, I mean, and, and banks, I mean, there's a business like everybody else. Sometimes they have a product they're trying to push. Sometimes, you know, they'll lower the standards a little bit to get more people, you know, because they want more people to have the cards. So you just got to see what's, you know, what the climate's like in the credit card market. And by doing that is seeing what offers start getting kicked your way. So now moving forward, right about the year mark is, is when your secured cards is going to graduate to unsecured. This is really awesome when this happens because it's like, boom, now you've got a card that's almost a year old, um, that's unsecured, that's from a major bank. Again, I'm not telling you guys to try to go and get Credit One or First Horizon or all those, you know, crappy trash bank cards. They're just, they're not worth it in my opinion. So after, you're way better off getting the secure card. So once you get the secure card and it graduates now, in this area, you're starting to, you're starting to be sitting pretty because now you've got, if you went ahead and did, got the secure cards, you've got uh, one account there. Let's just say you got an account here. So you got two accounts there, three accounts from the, from the shopping trick, four accounts from the uh, loan builder, cre uh, credit builder loans. So now you have four accounts that are starting to, you know, have some age to them that are around, you know, I don't know eight months. I see your, your overall credit age would probably be around eight months about right here, which is starting to get pretty good. It's past six months. I mean, it's like, it's hard. If you, when you have a brand new account, it's like, it's tough to get new stuff. It's like trying to get in the door. Once you're in the door, then it's like, all right, but uh, it's just getting past that one point. So now when you're going into this phase of uh, your credit, now you're starting to be able to get the better stuff. And when I mean better, I mean, you're starting to get cards that um, have 0% uh, interest uh, intros, balance transfer offers, the limits are higher. Also, um, if you were able to in this section, if you're able to get a Citibank card, let's just say you were able to get a Citibank card after you know, eight months. So let's just say if you got it, I don't know, like in this area, once you get to over here, now you can ask for a credit line increase on that Citibank card. I know Citibank's been given out about, what was it, 1,000 to 5,000 starting out for that uh, American Airlines card. So if you think about it, now you can ask for a credit line increase and they don't, they're good about that. They don't ding up your credit for asking for a credit line increase. You can then get another 1,500 added to it. So that's, a, that's definitely another thing to, to know, you know, is in this, pretty much in this area of your timeline, you can start asking for credit line increases. Also with Synchrony Bank, if you got a Synchrony card in this uh, back here in this you know part of the timeline, over here, you can now start asking for credit line increases on them. And they're really good. I mean, they'll, they'll up it like 2000, depending on, I mean, a lot depends on how much utilization you're you know using. If you are getting these cards and then running them up, you're, pretty much going to screw yourself later on down the road because you won't be able to get the better cards. That's another thing I want to let you guys know. It's like if when you're, while you're doing this, you know, make sure you're using the cards, but paying them off because if you run them up and you get your utilization too high, it's going to block you from being able to, you know, go to the next level. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. So you know, when you're in, so it, another thing in this uh, year to a six months, a year and six months, you can now cold apply for more banks. More banks are going to be open to you for you to be able to cold apply. So if you see, I've listed them here. Obviously, the banks from over in this section you can cold apply for. But now we've got some new ones, like you can get a Barclay. Barclay, will, uh, they'll start you out pretty low because they, they like to build a relationship with you. So they'll probably start you out with 1000 bucks. Discover is a little more generous. And you can also see if you're pre-qualified using their... Uh, pre-qualification uh, tool on their website. So I would use that before applying. BBVA, they'll probably send you an offer. They've been sending out offers. I know Capital One will send offers. They send offers like like crazy. So um, you're definitely, if you haven't, uh, you know, run up your cards or gotten any missed payments this far, you should be able to get these, you know, in this caliber of uh, card, which is nice. Now moving into the next phase, of about a year and six months to two years. Now 
you're in what I like to say the big boy leagues. Now your your credit is good. You have uh, you know a decent amount of, of accounts. You probably have like six accounts by now. Let's see if you got the loan builder account, you got the secured card, you got the uh, shopping cart trick card, you got a Citibank card, a Synchrony card, and over here, let's just say you got a Barclay. Now you have six cards. And some of them are, you know, over a year old of history. Some of them are newer, but the, uh, the history of the other ones will, you know, help balance that out. Now you can go and you could try applying for like, you know, in this section, you could try applying for a bigger card, like of a bank of America, PNC. Um, you can also get cards, you know, from, you know, the different banks it, that are going to be a higher caliber card, like cards with bigger limits, like. 10,000 plus also rewards, 0% intro, you know, offers, um, balance transfer offers, pretty much all the good stuff that you want, lower interest rates. I mean, these are the good cards that you've, you know, been wanting to get since the beginning. That's, you know, that's how you get there. Also home loans, real car loans. Yeah, car loans are weird. It's like, they seem real generous. Like you can actually get a mudlot car loan like over here with just six months to a year. I know with Trey Lines, AU Trey Lines, I mean, they really work with cars for some reason. I mean, they work, they work with credit cards, but I mean, I've just, I've heard stories with cars. It's like, they just work really good. Having an AU on there that can, that can get you a car loan lickety split. I don't know, you know, I mean, I've been hearing that and I haven't heard otherwise. So, you know, car loans are definitely something you can get uh, earlier on. But over here, when you get into this section, I mean, you can get like, go to the dealership and get the 0%, um, get, you know, home loans. I mean, personal loans. I mean, you're good if you, when you make it to this part of the timeline. So, um, and also you can ask for another credit line increase on those synchrony cards and the Citibank cards. So now you're looking at, let's just say they started out, you started you out at 5,000 here. You're looking at getting the credit line increase here. So that's, what is it? Six, seven, like over $7,000 right here. Um, just by asking for credit line increases because you, sh you can ask for credit line increases about every uh, four to six months, I would, you know, like give or take. I mean, you kind of got to jiggle the locks to figure out, you know, the exact thing, but, you know, that's a good rule of thumb. But um, uh, what is it? The synchrony card also, you'll be able to get uh, a another credit line increase on that. And also, if you got a card in here, like let's just say you got a Barclay, you could try to get a credit line increase, but they're not quite as generous as uh, Citibank and Synchrony. C Citibank and Synchrony, for some reason, they just they're just they're generous with their money. I mean, they uh, you, you can ask for credit line increases like every you know really frequently, and it you know doesn't affect your credit, and um, you know they seem to just give it out. Also, as far as uh, the income that you claim. This is something that I haven't seen anybody really talk about. So I want to talk about it. When you put down your income, don't go. It's like, yes, you can fudge the numbers as far as your income, but don't go crazy because it's like, they're going to start asking you for W2, you know, documents and shit. I mean, they're not stupid. If you say you make it $200,000, they're going to want to see some proof of that. So, I mean, it's like you can fudge the numbers, but make it, you know, plausible, make it, uh, you know, don't go outside the scope of reality. So I would never, uh, put down that you make more than $120,000 unless you actually do because chances are they're going to say, all right, let's see your W-2 forms and all that shit, which, you know, if you don't make that, you're not going to be able to provide. So why, you know, don't waste the inquiry. Just you can work your way up to the higher limits without uh, fudging your income numbers. You just, you know, obviously it just takes time. But I hope this helps. I hope you guys can look at this and kind of get an idea of how long it takes and what to do and the steps as far as building your credit. Um, in my in later videos, I'm going to be going over how to actually get negative stuff removed, but I figured I'd start out with this, you know, showing you guys a step-by-step -step timeline of what to do as far as building your credit. Now, also, let's just say if you're somebody who you're not new, but you know, let's just say you're in this area. Well, this, this timeline still applies to you because you just take it further. If you have a card that's within this range, and, you know, the, 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 the months, you know, it, it's, let's just say it's six months old that's in this range, then, then, you know, you're over here. So, um, you know, you can use this timeline to basically gauge where you are and how, you know, what your next move would be as far as building your credit. 
just, you know, another, you know, couple things I want to point out is, is you definitely don't want to put a lot of inquiries. So don't go applying for a bunch of stuff. I mean, really keep it. You want to really keep it low because once those inquiries get on, it's like, yeah, you can have them removed, but they're a bitch. And it's like, it takes time. It's frustrating. It's like, you're better off. It's way easier to avoid an inquiry than it is to remove one. So that's, you know, that's my philosophy. So, you know, take, take it or leave it. Also, as far as AU trade lines are concerned, yes, they will affect this. Um, obviously, if you put a trade line in, you probably, this, this would be my, if you're going to use authorized user trade lines, this would be my suggestion or the strategy that I would implement if I was doing this. It would be, if you're starting out brand new, you want to get a small trade line. If you get some big mamma jamma trade line over here, you're still not going to be able to get over here, you know what I mean, within this time period. I mean, maybe with the cars, but not, not with the credit cards or anything else. So if I was, if I was doing this, I would start off with a small authorized user trade line. That's at least six months old. Then I would, you know, start you know, getting these accounts after I did that. And then maybe around here, I would get like a bigger trade line that would actually catapult me into this class faster. If that was something I wanted to do you know, as far as, you know, authorized user trade lines are concerned and, you know, trying to make this go even faster. I mean, you may be able to shave some months off of this timeline if you get an authorized user trade line, but um, just don't have any unrealistic expectations because there, I mean, there isn't a trade line in the world that you could put on right here. that's going to get you over here in one month. It's just not going to happen. So, and also, you know, when the banks look at it, it's like when they see a bunch of different accounts and then a trade line mixed in, that looks way better than just, you've got a really big ass trade line and nothing else. Like that, see, like if a human looks at that, they're gonna say, yeah, I don't think so. So what you wanna do is definitely make it look plausible, make it look possible, make it look real. Don't make it look like you're someone who's just trying to game the system because they're looking out for shit like that. That's just a heads up. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Crusader out.